Okay, we're going to continue our videos about our vector logo. We've actually finished all the steps, but just to review and kind of put it all together. The theme for the semester was dynamic clouds and soaring flight. I always try to give some sort of mashup theme, so you're taking at least two ideas and trying to communicate them in a black shape logo that then we add color to. A good logo is clear, versatile, and simple. Simplicity is helpful. And it's best to think of it as being cut out of paper. First cut out of black paper, <laughs> you know. So we started with some sketches. The reason we're doing the dynamic clouds and soaring flight theme is these are gonna be integrated into a wall film design that's gonna support the new STEM building and will be placed in a main study room for students, science, technology, engineering, and math students. And there is some progress on that. You know, I've posted a lot of your sketches from Proving Ground number two. And it's gonna be interesting to see how these finished designs will get integrated into the final wall film, right? So as you finish your designs as just black shape vectors that deal with dynamic clouds and soaring flight, that's what's gonna get integrated into this design, which is still needing to be built because they finally just gave me the dimensions. So this is the dimensions of the main wall. It's, it's bigger than I thought. It's basically 10 by 20 feet. So this is a mock-up of how our design so far will work within it. These are spaces that still need to be created. So I will work, work on that with digital art students. And it's funny, the reason we have these spaces is because that's where this cabinet and this counter is gonna cover up. So we're trying to use everything. And then we will layer your designs into that. But it's gonna be pretty remarkable because it's 10 feet tall of this, like 20 feet wide. So it's a big expanse. So it'll be like looking at a blue sky. And I've asked for more information about whether this is facing windows or what, but it'll be really, really cool to see that develop. So you are supporting that project. And there's lots of ways we can integrate your, your logos into it, but one simple way is to just take your black logo shape and then just layer it in to these squares, right? Like each logo gets a square and it's presented, probably not in black, probably in like a transparent white so that there are little like icons and emblems coming through. But I will definitely be working with that and sharing it with you and taking your ideas about how to integrate them. But we definitely want student voices represented, your individual ideas, your individual styles. That's what you're doing with your logos. And we're all supporting the same theme. So we started by finding inspiration and then sketching. We used three different design approaches, which are very helpful for logos. They're not the only ways you can go about it, but it's helpful if you're just getting introduced to logo design. The first is central symmetrical, where the eye kind of goes to the middle of the logo as a target and then kind of leaves quickly, but it becomes really iconic, really symbolic even if it's not perfectly symmetrical. This design here, which is kind of a, a fourth design I did, has elements of being central symmetrical, even though it's not fully symmetrical, right? It's definitely not as fully dynamic as this design. So dynamic design approaches have to do with eye movement going quickly through it. You know, moving from one side to the other, usually using curves and diagonals. And then a third approach is playing with positive and negative space, which I was also trying to do with this one a little bit. But that's the one I actually ended up using where the black cutout shapes actually create a new shape in the leftover space. So that's my sketch of it. And one sketch was filled in with black as well. That's not always necessary, but it's really helpful because you're thinking of this as being cut out of black shapes. 
and then using Adobe Illustrator, I'll show you with our AI file, which is an Adobe Illustrator file. So that will open up an Illustrator for us. I traced on top of the sketch, which was here. I made my sketch 50% opacity. That is a raster file, that sketch, because it was just scanned into the computer or a photo was taken of it. You can see those pixels really clearly. But then on top of that, I built vector paths. And these vector paths are created by anchors. I'll show you the anchors. I have to unlock it. So you can see the anchor points. And then those anchor points are connected with either straight lines or curves, curves in this instance. And then they can be filled in. So this is called a fill path because it's filled in with black. But you can see the raster pixels behind it from the sketch. And you can see how the vector is just perfectly smooth no matter how, how much I zoom in. Because it's created by anchors, curves, or straights that are either filled in or not. And then you can also add strokes to your paths. Right now my stroke is empty and I want all of your logos to have empty strokes, but just so you know how vectors work, you can also add kind of outline strokes to them that are a certain line weight based on point size. And that's how vectors work. Now, we could fill it in with more complicated things than a simple flat black, but I want logos are meant to be simple to begin with. So flat black is the way we're, we're starting our design process. So I built those up. And then I turned off my sketch. And then I have my finished vector in black shapes. But in order to use it outside of a vector program, I have to save it a few different ways. So I can save it as an AI file. That means Adobe Illustrator. But then I'm not able to bring it into Photoshop or bring it into Photo P or any other kind of program. So in order to, to save it to be used in various programs, I can first save my black logo as an SVG. I'll do uncompressed SVG because they don't take up much memory. S SVG stands for standard vector graphic, or no, scalable vector graphic, I think. And I already saved it like that, but that is able to be brought into the vector.com program. And then the other way, my favorite way to save it is as an EPS, and that allows you to bring it into Photoshop. So if you save it as an EPS, I already have saved it. You'll see that here. So I have it as an SVG, I have it as an AI file, and most importantly, I have it as an EPS file. Then I go to Photoshop or Photo P. I go to a raster program rather than a vector program. All I'm doing within Illustrator is creating my black shapes. And I'm making sure there's no strokes to it. I'm making sure there's no white shapes. It's just solid black. And I can help you troubleshoot if something weird is happening for you. Then I go to Photoshop. And instead of opening up my EPS file in Photoshop, this is incredibly important to remember. It's why I'm reviewing all of it, even though this is covered in previous tutorials. Instead of opening up my EPS and saying open with Photoshop. Because when you do that, it's going to give you this, this window. It's going to force you to rasterize it. And you do not want to rasterize your vector. Rasterizing means turning it into pixels within the program. We do not want to do that. Instead, we want to say file new. So all of you will need to do this with your logo. File new, we want it to be eight by 10 inches. My logo is wider than it is tall, so it's gonna be 10 inches wide by eight inches tall. But if your logo is taller than it is wide, you want 10 inches tall and eight inches wide. 
And then the resolution you want is 350 pixels per inch. That is 50 pixels per inch higher than standard print resolution. It is what I call our lab resolution, our Arts 205 lab resolution. And that's so if you ever want to, when we go to print and you want to make it just a little bit bigger than you have, you have the resolution to do that. And it's still professional quality. So 350 pixels per inch at 8 by 10 inches. All the other defaults, white background RGB color, which is different. We'll learn more about that in the second half of class because Illustrator works in CMYK. So RGB is a conversion. And then say create. You just have a blank piece of paper. That blank piece of paper in Photoshop already has a pixel dimension. It's going to be 3,500 pixels by 2,800 pixels because that's 8 by 10 by 350 as pixels. Then what you do is you drag and drop like we have so many times with compositing. Your EPS file, it will only work with the EPS vector. And just like you've always done when you composite, you can place it. If you want to center it exactly, you can just hold down Option. And you place it in a way you think looks good. And then you hit Return. Now, this is not rasterized. Instead, it's a smart object based on a vector. You'll notice it has that little window in the layer icon. It means if you try to erase it or try to add pixels or try to paint it on something, it will say it can't be unless it's rasterized first, and we never want to rasterize it. But what we can do is add effects to it without rasterizing it. And so if we think that this looks good on the 8x10, then think of this black space around it as your mat, and this is your printout. And if you wanted to add effects to it to make it look a little bit better than just flat black, you are allowed to. You would do that by double clicking on the layer. But I don't want you to add any color effects here. I want you to first have just a black shaped logo. But you could add something like a drop shadow to it. And you could play with those settings. I'm fine with that because that's all rendered from a black shaped logo. Soften it slightly. And now that's subtle, but maybe I like that. You know, it brings it to life a little bit. Because you're thinking about what do you want to print? And what do you want to pay real money on paper and ink to print? So you make it look as good as you can. When you're happy with that, you are going to turn off the white background. You can keep your effects, but you're going to turn off a white background. In fact, another effect I might want to add is a white stroke. Again, not color, but a white stroke. And I'm going to set it to be on the outside of my design, or maybe even on the center. So you can play with all these different settings. Now, what's nice about a white stroke on your black shape logo is that if your black logo is shown on a black website, it will be invisible, right? So what I often do when I do logo design is I create three backgrounds. I create a white background layer, a black background layer. You can see that. I can't see the drop shadow at all, but I can see that white stroke. And I create a middle gray background layer. And we'll do this with our spot illustrations later as well. And so all of these are effects that are on my vector. A stroke and a drop shadow. And there's other things that could be added as well, but we'll do that more with the color effects. So if I'm happy with that, I turn off all of my backgrounds. So you just see the, the, empty, the empty grid behind. And then to save that as a, in a way that's transparent, you first are going to save it as a Photoshop file. We don't want to lose your work. But this is not your vector anymore. This is now your, your black logo to print. So we have to put a name in there. 
And of course, my computer's taking a while, but I'm going to put in my usual semester code, FA21, 